All right, this is a follow-up part two to the Oscar introduction video that I posted. Some of it might overlap a little bit just to sort of flesh things out and provide a base for everyone, but I'm gonna try to focus on new features that I didn't include in the last video. This is the, the make of my machine. ResMed made it, the model, AirSense 10 Elite. If you hover over this, it'll tell you your model number and the serial number on the right there. PAP mode is the algorithm that's enabled on the machine. Some machines are capable of configuring to more than one setting. So you can have fixed pressure, you could have APAP, you could have adaptive servo ventilation, you could have BiPAP, et cetera. So mine's fixed. Here's the pressure setting at 15. Start and end times. So started at 2 a.m., ended at 9 a.m., seven hours. This is the date, obviously. Pretty informative, eh? Bet you're glad you clicked on this video. This doesn't tell you when you were sleeping. This just tells you the time that you turned your machine off and, and the time that you ended you know, your last session. The, the machine has no way of telling whether you're sleeping or you're not sleeping. Change Stokes respiration, percentage of the night, large leak. So different machines are gonna have different definitions of what's considered a large leak. For my machine, it's 24 liters per minute, which you can see in this leak graph is this red line. So anything above there, above that red line, they're gonna consider as time above the large leak. So if you look here, 0.14% of the entire night was spent above the large leak line. Clear airway, the machine detects that the airway is open, so you could be having a central apnea. What it'll do is it'll actually send a little pulse of air and determine whether it's due to obstruction or if it's due to a clear airway. Obstructive apnea, I don't think I need to explain that. Unclassified apnea is when the machine is basically unable to determine what kind of apnea it was. Hypopnea, you guys all know. Rira, respiratory effort related arousals, which is basically a sub hypopnea. And look, this is the thing, this is the thing about sleep medicine that they, they've just got it so wrong as a consensus slash in the norm. The vanguards of sleep medicine understand this nuance, but unfortunately, which is why so many patients feel marginalized, it's ignored. And, you know, in their defense, we, we don't want to be overly paranoid or, or overly hyper-focused or, you know, fail to look at things from 30,000 feet. However, how much suffocation is permitted? That's the question that one must ask themselves. Is any suffocation bad? Is 20% suffocation bad? Arira, a respiratory effort related arousal, is less than a hypopnea. A hypopnea is less than a complete obstructive apnea. So the question that's then begged is, well, what's, what's beneath Arira? Where's that line, right? And this is something I'll start to talk about a bit more in future videos and outline the research and the data, which there is a lot of, that's the other thing. People might be scratching their heads and go, what, people have researched that? That's the beautiful thing about the world and the internet and us all connecting with each other. If you have a question, there's a chance that someone has already tried to answer that question. And that's the case for flow limitations. Anyways, continuing on, the statistics section. So min stands for minimum, which is the minimal value for that channel. So the minimum value or the minimum pressure in this night was 15, obviously, because it's fixed pressure. That's also the maximum pressure, right? Which is over here. The minimum respiratory rate was 11 breaths per minute. And minimum applies to this whole channel. These are all minimum values. Med stands for median, not medium, median, me, D, just kidding, median. And it can be considered the middle value. So if you were to take all the, for example, in this case, pressures, if you were to take all the pressures throughout the night and then ranked them from lowest to highest, then the middle of that rank would be considered the median. Okay. 95%, what does that mean? So the very short answer is during 95% of the night, your pressure was at that or below it. So in other words, my pressure here was at or below 15 for 95% of the night, which in turn means that for 5% of the night, it was actually above that. If it was changing, it's not changing. I'll explain this in a little bit more detail, just kidding. So for pressure, this is the minimum value, 15, the median, the 95th percentile, which I've explained, and the 99.5th percentile, which you can basically just translate to the highest amount. Just when you look at 99.5, think of highest value. EPAP stands for expiratory positive airway pressure. So on BiPAP machines, you can have an inspiratory pressure and then a different expiratory pressure. Or in other words, when you breathe in, there's one pressure. When you breathe out, there's another pressure. You might be scratching your head 
head thinking, well, why do you have an EPAP value if you're using fixed pressure? The reason is because there's something called expiratory pressure relief, EPR, which provides some pressure relief when I expire. It is a fixed pressure, but it does dip down to 13 on every breath. So, you know, word that as you will. I, know, I realize it sounds like I'm doing a little bit of mental gymnastics trying to call this a fixed pressure when it's not a fixed pressure, but... Anyways, minute ventilation is the amount of air that you inhale per and exhale per minute in liters, liters per minute. So again, minimum value, the median value, the, that's liters, so 9.63 liters, uh, the 95th percentile, so 95% of my breaths were at or below 13 liters per minute. Respiratory rate, how many times you're breathing per minute. So 11 is the minimum, 16 median. Flow limit. So flow limit is this graph right here. It's an effort to basically index or, or quantify the degree that flow is limited. So if you look in, in what, it's, what it's talking about is actually this graph here. So you can see that when you breathe in here, it's, it's, not a, it's not like the other breaths, right? The other breaths are cleaner, right? And higher. These ones are limited. I'm trying to breathe in, but it's not really going up all the way. I'm not getting the full breath in. And then that's measured and quantified in the flow limit graph. So that's a little overture. We'll, we'll get we'll get back to that for sure. Really important concept that I can't wait to dive into. Leak rate, you guys know, again, in liters, liters per minute. Snore, the snore value. Machines actually, yes, they can measure your snore, typically through capturing audio. Inspiratory time, how long it takes for your average breathing in. And expiratory time, the the average amount of time it takes to breathe out. What does it say here? Time taken to breathe out. Pretty good, eh? Time taken to breathe in. Tidal volume is basically the amount of air that you breathe per breath in milliliters. Minute ventilation is tidal volume times respiratory rate. In other words, if you multiply tidal volume and respiratory rate, you'll get the minute ventilation values. And total time in apnea is the amount of time in the entire night that you spent in an apnea. Time over leak red line. So each machine is gonna have a different threshold for what's acceptable leak rate. For the ResMed that I have, it's 24 liters per minute, which you can see as this red line. So this time over leak red line is asking, of all the time in the night, what percentage of that time was the leak above this unacceptable 24 liters per minute. Also worth mentioning too, this leak rate, this acceptable leak rate can actually be changed if you go to file, preferences, and then CPAP. Device settings. The, this is literally just the settings that you have on your machines. You can obviously see this on your machine as well. Some of it might be behind the clinical menu, but most of it should be front and available. So mode, again, again you know, CPAP, pressure, this is the pressure that it was on. Antibacterial filter, that's just a certain type of filter that you can stick into your, your machine. And it needs to know this because the, the algorithm, the machine software will actually configure it itself a little bit differently depending on how much resistance in the circuit there is. That's why you also have to change your settings from full face mask to nasal mask to nasal pillows because the, the pressure delivery will vary between those, those options. Climate control, whether it's on automatic or manual, expiratory pressure, relief on full time which means for the entire night so when i exhale the machine's pressure goes down a little bit to make it a little bit more comfortable the level is two centimeters so it goes it goes down by two centimeters of pressure the essential setting is just about what's on the dashboard on your machine so when it says on it gives you the bare minimum when it says plus it gives you the bare minimum plus a few more little things like hi per month usage hours per month and so on humidifier status whether your humidifier is on or not humidity level self-explanatory mask whether it's full face pillows or nasal as i mentioned ramp the ramp feature is just if it's on your machine will start at a low pressure that's a little bit easier to fall asleep to and and make its way up to your therapy pressure instead of starting right at your therapy pressure which obviously is a comfort feature that patients on higher pressures especially might enjoy smart start is you stick the you stick the mask on and, and, it, and it and you start breathing and it can literally feel that you're breathing so it'll turn the machine on instead of pressing the button kind of useless if you ask me temperature which is the temperature of the tube temperature enable i honestly don't know what that means sorry you can unsubscribe if you want right now we're up here in the details tab now i'm going over to the events this will list all of the events throughout the night click this arrow it expands you can see these are all the hypopneas that i had during the night so if i click on it it'll actually 
jump to that point in the graph, which is super helpful and zoom in, as you can see. So there's the first hypopnea. There's the second one, the third one, large leak, same thing. You can click on it and you can go to where it is in the graph. Keep in mind, we're looking at this graph now. There's the large leak. Remember anything above that red line at 24 liters per minute is considered a large leak. And it flags it for me so that I can know how, you know, how much, what percentage of the night or in what cases under what data and circumstances this large leak may occur. This little number in the brackets just explains for how long that event was happening. So this large leak above this line was just for two seconds. The second one was for six seconds. The third one was for 20 seconds and so on and so forth. Anyways, I think you get the idea. And just as a reminder, down here, you can choose which events you want to be included in all of these graphs. Okay, jumping over to the notes tab. Now, this is the journal. You can write whatever you want in here. There are no rules. You can say, I love CPAP friend. And I highly, highly, strongly, strongly, highly recommend especially if you're starting off to use the journal. But if you're really trying to figure out what's going wrong and how you can give yourself the best chances of rectifying the wrongs in your therapy and eliminating what it's causing issues for you so that you can get better sleep, I highly recommend using the journal. And not only that, I would also advise making a very structured and consistent day to day. That is ask yourself the same questions so that you can compare the answers. For example, you could say, did I exercise? Yes, it was intense. I did it for an hour. Light exposure. I was outside for maybe two hours. I took these medications. I didn't drink. My window was open. That sounds a little bit, you know, far out, but it could play a significant role. Everyone's different. The important takeaway here is that you need to tailor therapy and medicine to you. Let the data drive your decision-making. Also down here, super helpful, highly recommended. When you wake up the next morning, you can choose how you're feeling. I'm feeling awesome because I watched a CPAP friend video this morning to I feel like a zombie because I woke up 46,000 times during the night. This is weight that will calculate your BMI for every day, which you can also use as a statistical variable. For some of you, this this is gonna, some of this stuff probably sounds nuts. Like why would you want to calculate your BMI? Well, it just so happens that BMI is actually a pretty important variable and can consideration for people who have sleep disordered breathing. And if you can calculate your BMI over a long period of time, yeah, maybe it's not different between Monday and Friday, but between Monday and Friday, a year in the future where your BMI dropped, let's say 15% and you notice your data is way better and you're feeling way better. And that's something that you're going to want to sort of put in your back pocket. In order for this to work, however, you have to enter your height in the profile uh, setup stage that I went over in the first video. Okay, moving on. This is the bookmarks tab. You can go anywhere in your data and create a bookmark. So if I add bookmark here, what it'll do is actually bookmark this time, 3.47 a.m., 42, and it'll create a library of them that I can click back to. So if you have some really strange data or stuff that really sticks out that you wanna go back to, you can bookmark it. And if you double click here, you can call it whatever you want. And if you have the right sidebar viewable, then you can actually click on the bottom here at bookmarks in this super small font you can see up here and I can click it and it'll go there for me. And if you write something specific in your bookmark, you can actually, you know, just punch it in the search bar up here and it'll find it for you. Anyways, that's where I'm going to end the video because I personally grieve watching long videos. See you next time.